guys, welcome back to Semojo Homestead. We are working in the garden today. We are also gonna take you along for a little foraging trip through our backwoods. You guys don't really get to see the backwoods that much. And so you'll get to see a part of the property that we don't really show on a lot of the videos. Um, probably one of my favorite parts yes. outside of like the garden and the immediate area around the house. If you don't know, I'm Jeremy, this is Cass, and we homestead on about an acre. We have five acres and the other four are in the woods. And some of that is used for the animals. And then some of it is just used for our personal getaway space. Yeah. I have been super interested in foraging for a little bit of time now. We, um, when we got our land, I really felt like I know there's food here. Like I know that there's food to be found and I didn't really have any foraging background, but I've been lucky enough to make some connections with some other foragers and to learn some things. So some of the stuff you might've already known about, but I'll tell you kind of some of the information about the plants that I didn't know about that I just recently learned about. But first, before we go on our little foraging trip, we have to plant some tomatoes and peppers. Let's go do that. Yeah. So we use this weed fabric that is plastic. It's like woven plastic um, ribbon. And so it does allow water to get through it. But with that, uh, you gotta make a hole, obviously, to plant with. And so, hey Frost, how are you? Are you missing your friend? Yeah. We'll talk about why she's missing her friend when we go to highs and lows. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, so you want to make a hole. If you just go in and cut this out, it tends to fray really bad. And so to keep that from happening, we use a butane torch. We don't have a fancy one. This is just a very basic cheap one that you can get at Walmart or Lowe's or wherever. Most of your box stores will have something like this. Um, but we just use it, burn the holes. We do our holes about two feet apart which gives enough room for most crops so that we can rotate crops through each year and still have spacing that's adequate for everything. Okay, so one thing we have said a lot is that we like to do things kind of efficiently and quickly on our homestead. And when you're planting 100 tomato plants or however many we end up planting, Digging those holes could take a lot of time, unless you use an auger. This tool makes those holes go a lot faster. So we have our weed fabric all burnt and ready to go. You don't want to do it too fast, obviously. You're going to sling dirt everywhere, but this makes the job a whole lot easier. Okay, so now that we've got our hole, I put a little bit of dirt in there because obviously I don't want it to be too deep, but um, I'm not gonna make it the correct depth with just dirt. I'm gonna put in some rabbit manure. It has some hay and stuff mixed in there because we get it from underneath our cage. And get that in there as some plant food fertilizer. Then I put my pepper down, use that dirt. Make sure it's down there well. We're good to go. The way we're going to plant this garden is we're going to put our pepper plants in this front arch because they are a lower plant. And then behind me, we will plant all of our tomatoes and what we'll do is in the holes with the tomatoes, we're also going to be planting some basil because basil is a great companion plant for tomatoes and it will help deter the hornworms. And also when we want to come pick our tomatoes for our sandwiches, we can just pick some basil. So tomato planting time, we're super excited. This variety, I have no clue what it is. 
in our kind of secret Santa surprise pack that we got, we got one small little bag of tomato seeds. It was just a fun random mix of seeds in there. Uh, I think they are all heirloom. So that's what's going in this row is just our surprise tomatoes. Um, several different varieties. We'll find out what they are. So we got our holes drilled. So what we're doing, we made them really deep because as you can see, our tomatoes got a little bit spindly. They've got really good, strong stems, so they're not flopping over or anything, but uh, they are very tall and ready to get in the ground. So we made them really deep. So we're gonna drop them in. Most people do know this, that if you plant them deep, you give them a stronger root structure because all of the little fuzzy hairs on a tomato plant are actually roots that are ready to grow if given the opportunity. So we're gonna do that. Because they're so long, we're planting them really deep so that we can eliminate some of that spindliness of them and create just a stronger plant. So we're putting that down in there. We're taking our rabbit manure and just throwing two good size handfuls in there around the base of it to encourage those roots to go down. And then we have eggshells. A lot of people will just crack an egg, put it in there. Um, the biggest thing from what I understand that eggshells do is add that calcium that tomatoes really like. So what we do with our eggshells is we bake them, which makes them really brittle. And then we just send them through the blender to create pretty much a powder. The benefit of doing that is it makes that calcium much more accessible faster. And so it's ready to be soaked up by the the roots of the tomato plant. So we're just putting a little bit of that down in there with them and then planting them. Okay, so we got some tomatoes in the ground and some peppers. We have um, a few more to do, but we're gonna wait on those. I wanted to take some time to show you a little bit of what we have found on our property. Now, the first one I'm sure most of you know is a dandelion. There are people that eat or that consume all parts of the dandelion. You can use the flour for tea or on salads. You can roast the root as a medicinal tea as well. And the leaves, are really good in salad. I have not found a way to make the tea the way I like it with the fresh flour. I feel like it is a little bit bitter when you make a tea from the dandelion flour, but I've seen where some people actually dry it and let the yellow petals fall off so you don't have any of that green, and then they mix it with other things. Seems like a lot of work, but it might be worth a try. What I have found I love is the actual green. It is really, really good in a salad. We've been putting it in our kale salads and it is really, really jam packed full of folic acid. So if you're pregnant, this is a great plant to add to your salad. These really thin leaves are the ones that I like to eat and we just chop them up kind of small and they're crunchy. They give a nice texture to your salad and they are jam-packed for vitamins and minerals that your body needs. You know, we, we had talked about this being a food forest and wanting to go that direction. I love the fact that we have so much dandelion here because to me that does feel like it's becoming more of a food forest. Um, I wanna show you something else that I found growing here that we also will be adding to our salads. So the other edible plant that we have found over here in our food forest area is a crimson clover. So clover, I'm sure you know, is a great forage for your animals. It's We have actually been feeding it to our bunnies, but also the flower can be added to salads. Um, I have a friend, um, her name's Lisa. She does homesteading in Hungary. That's her YouTube channel and she has a Facebook page. And so I've, she's been learning a lot about foraging. I've been asking her a bunch of questions and she said that these are great on salads and sauteed and in smoothies. So I thought that was really neat. The other thing they say 
Now, I don't know if you have access to a bunch of land, but evidently you can dry the seeds and turn them into a flower. Who knew? We don't have a nice huge field that we could like get all, we could cultivate our own bread flour or flour from, but that would be really neat. The other thing that you can do is you can use these flower parts for tea. Just some fun facts about the crimson clover and any clover that you have. I'm sure most of you also know that ni that clover is a great cover crop. It puts nitrogen back into your soil. So it might just be a good thing to add to your garden. So you have lots of options with clover. Clover is a great addition that you could add to your garden or to your tea bed or to your homestead. So the last thing we have to show you in our orchard area is another salad. I've got a dog in front of me here. Another salad add-in or plant or wild plant forage. And it is a broadleaf plantain. Again, these are leaves that you can add to your salad. The leaves are a little bit fuzzy. So just make sure you pick them when they're young because the older they get, the bigger they get, more fuzzy they become. So this is definitely one you would want to add in when it's a smaller plant. All right guys, so I'm gonna show you what my personal favorite plant to forage is. So we are in our woods and it is amazing. It's all leafed out and so it feels so much better. That's why I love about back here. And one of the reasons why we really don't want to clear back here because it's just a lot cooler, especially in the summertime, like by 10 degrees cooler than our yard. So it's a great place just to come cool off in the woods. But I wanted to show you muscadine. Oh, this is not necessarily my favorite one, but if you don't know what it looks like, it looks like a grape leaf. Now these have just leafed out. Normally these leaves would be a lot bigger, but in the South, this stuff grows everywhere. And it's a great substitute for grape leaves. Like if you like to do anything with like Greek cooking, it's popular with that, but you just blanch them, wrap whatever you want to in them and cook them. So an easy substitute if you don't have access to grape leaves. All right, so my favorite is Greenbrier. Also, some people call it Cymax. Uh, it's the long vines that grow up off of these huge tubers and you usually find them like growing up into trees and taking over and they've got thorns and they're really annoying. But this new growth right here, that's what I'm after. I describe it as like a cross between broccoli and asparagus and you can just eat it raw. Mm. If I remember correctly, it's high in vitamin C. I may be wrong on that, but um, it is very nutritious. We like to just kind of throw it into salad. The Flavor, like I said, it's kind of a cross between asparagus and broccoli. So it's a good just uh, flavor for salads. I will personally just walk through the woods and eat them. The other valuable part to this is the tuber. It is a very high starch and actually a lot of Native Americans would use that um, for a main food source for starches and stuff like that. So, I mean, if really push came to shove, this stuff grows everywhere. And all you gotta do is go find it, dig up the tubers, and you got a great starch to use, however you want to. Now, I haven't looked into re recipes or how to use it or anything. I would imagine you could use it similarly to like potatoes or to thicken stuff or soups. But um, yeah, good to know. Thanks for hanging out with us um, and journeying with us as we learn, share with you what we've learned about foraging in this short period of time yes. and planting our tomatoes. <laughs> Thankfully, the day turned out really well. We got rain this morning, yep. but and they were calling for rain all day today, but it actually cleared out about 1130 or even earlier. And so we were able to get a lot done that we really yeah. weren't anticipating getting much done at all this weekend. So. Yeah. Very, very thankful for that. If you guys like this material, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you have not done that. We really do appreciate that. And to all of you who have already subscribed, thank you so very much. We do value you guys. Yes, and commenting. We love to chat with you guys. And so we love your comments. Yeah, it's a great way for us to just build community with you yeah. guys. Um, that's so important to us. Also, 
If you know anybody that is into homesteading, thinking about it, has mentioned maybe starting to grow food for this year for the first time, uh, be sure to tell them about this channel, share it with them. Uh, we would love to be able to maybe encourage them and to hopefully give them a little bit of knowledge as they start out on an adventure like this. Yeah. It is the weekend, so we are gonna do highs and lows. It's Cass's favorite My time. <laughs> she does like it. I just always give her a rough time. Yes. Do you want to go first? Sure. So my high for this week was probably that it's Holy Week and we got to do some really neat things as a family. Um, I really enjoyed our Good Friday service that, or drop-in that we had at our church. It was just a really good time as a family to just remember Jesus and what he did for us. So that was probably my high. My low was probably... Mm, Actually, it's that I we didn't get all of our tomatoes planted. That's probably my low. Well, that's a pretty good week. Then. That's a pretty good week. That's not bad. If that's your low. That's my low. Especially heading into today, not thinking or thinking that we weren't going to get any planted. Any, yes. Yeah. And we got but, about half of them. Right. But I just really wanted them all in. Yeah. So that's probably my low. <laughs> so my high was a very busy week selling stuff. Yes. Yes. I mean, it was like <laughs> one thing after another yep. with animal cells. Yes. Um, we got rid of all of our baby goats. I know. So, so exciting. exciting. Except for Frost. We are keeping Frost. She's staying on the homestead as a future milker, but all the other ones are gone. Yes. Um, all the bucks went to the same home, which I was really, yeah. really excited about because they had gotten pretty close, especially yeah. the two brothers. And then the, our other mini Nubian doe went to a great home. Yes. Um, the daughter is super spoiled. excited about it. And mm -hmm. the two rabbits that we had left that we had been trying to sell also went to new homes mm, yep. as well and met people through these cells that just were really fun people to kind of talk yeah. to and hopefully yeah. continue to build a relationship with um, yeah. over you know the next few weeks, months, yeah. whatever it is. So all in all, I mean, if we throw Chuck into there, uh, we got rid of seven animals and that's a lot of responsibility yes. that is now off our plates. Yeah. So it's just, that's you know, nice. exciting. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, my low, I, I'm not sure I had a low this week. That's great. So yeah, it, that's was a, awesome. it was a good week. It was a good work week. It was a good family week. Yeah. Uh, good farm week. So yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna say it was an all around good week with no lows. Hey. That's, that's all that we have for you this week. Huh? It is Easter weekend. We are going to go enjoy the rest of this weekend with family and just having a little bit more of a relaxed weekend. Uh, but thank you guys for coming along with us. We, again, really do appreciate it. We hope you guys had a great Easter. Have a great week and be blessed.